Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, thank you for being patient with me. The house is pretty much done. We have an electrical issue. We have to sort out. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, but it's ready to show. So I'm um, taking today off, kind of relaxing. But I've been working on my book and I got to thinking, you know, it's been a long time since I've talked about the actual, you know, me actually dying. So I thought I would talk about a little bit of that a little bit because uh, really I haven't gone into a lot of detail about it. I thought people might be interested. So, you know, whenever I died, you know, I was very sick. And I knew I was really sick that night. And I told Stephanie, uh, you know, if I, if I made it through the night, that I would go to the hospital the next day. And that if I didn't make it through the night to give her to give the doctor uh, the information on what was wrong with me, and of course they found me next to the bed with my eyes rolled up in my head, and uh, yeah, I don't remember any of that at all. I don't remember anything about the the ride to the emergency room. I do know that I died in the emergency room because when I died. And I floated. I don't remember actually coming out of my body, but I do remember floating over my body. And there was no pain at all. Um, there was a lot of curiosity. Uh, I wasn't afraid at all. Uh, very comfortable with uh, floating above my body and looking down at it. Uh, I didn't uh, find that unnerving in any way it seemed very normal at the time and I looked down on my body like I was on the ceiling looking down and I watched everything that went on and I did that for a while because uh, I am a nurse so I wanted to see what they were doing and and how they were doing it and, and how much I could really see and and uh, uh, you know what the kind of things that they did which uh, I don't think I've ever put this in a video, but not only could I see and hear them talk back and forth, but I could, uh, I knew what they were thinking as well. I don't think I've ever told anybody that before, but yeah, I could hear them uh, thinking. I could, I knew about their lives, I knew about their, their names, their children's names, uh, all of that. I knew all of that at that point, but I didn't find it strange at all. But the next thing that really happened the most was that I could see, feel, know ghosts. What you would classically think of as ghosts. So I got to thinking about that a little bit and the whole time-space thing. And at this point, I had not realized that I was outside of time-space while I was watching this. But I do remember seeing and feeling what you would consider ghosts everywhere and they really are just everywhere and i remember having uh telepathic conversations with some of them and that none of this was odd at all none of this was strange uh being able to communicate th with them but i also don't think i've told anybody that also there during that same or in that same space or area or dimension or frequency or whatever you want to call it there were also what you would consider aliens that were coming and going and I remember having conversations with them as well as to why they were there and what they were doing there and being on the earth again none of this surprised me uh, there were beings that were humanoid uh, esque you know that stood bipedal and walked around and then there were entities that were um, all different other kinds of looks and although I from a human perspective I would have thought that they were scary but in the moment I didn't think that they were scary at all um, as we interacted uh, I knew who what they were thinking I knew where they were from uh, it was not that I was questioning why they were there it was how was their experience going it's more like that uh, because i knew what they were doing there we interacted and they knew who i was 
And I got to thinking about that dimensionally. And I've told you guys that I call the third, the fourth, and the fifth dimensions really use those terms more to be able to talk to you guys or other people because I don't really see it that way because to me they all merge into one and I don't think I've given this analogy I may have given it to a person but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again but if you think of and like you know retired nurse here so I'm gonna use uh, nursing or medical analogies frequently but if you think of a human brain being the all that is okay well think of the human brain being all that is now you can look at a very small portion of that human brain through a microscope and then you can think of like a spider looking at a human brain the way they would look at it or another part of the human brain being looked at with an MRI machine okay all of this brain which is my analogy for the all that is is all in the now and it's all at the times the same thing it isn't anything different you don't have to go anywhere for the, to see that brain it's just looking at the brain in different ways and that's what the different dimensions are okay so even though when I died and he was floating above my body I was still interacting with beings that were around and interacting with what I've been calling the third dimension but they really weren't in the third dimension as you think about it but they were in the third dimension from everybody else's perspective because they were interacting with the beings the humans that were operating with their five senses in the third dimension okay so they were still third dimensional beings they weren't in what I would consider the fourth dimension or the fifth dimension they were in the third dimension but they were in the third dimension in a place that you can't see with your five human senses so I just wanted y'all to know that there are a lot more things going on in the third and fourth dimension on this planet than you're aware of and the reason why you're not aware of them is because you're looking at back to my analogy of the human brain you're looking at the human brain through a microscope at just this one little part of it okay whereas when I died and I was floating above my body no longer was I working through the five human senses I was open to many many more senses so I was able to see back to the analogy that part of the human brain or that part of the all that is through a different form via different form now the way that you access these different areas is by the way you vibrate right and you the way you vibrate is based on your belief systems um, a lot in as humans they're based on on uh, the way you believe so therefore that's what you're seeing through so you're seeing through the five senses and because you can't you can't see these alien beings or you can't see the ghosts ghosts then uh, you don't know that they exist but if you were opening it up to what they've said sixth sixth sense and that's just one other sense and there are a lot lot more so there are all these other beings that are here interacting in 3d that have a whole different experience on Gaia um, that I don't think I've ever talked about that I interact with them as well and uh, there are so many different layers and so many different beings that are doing so many different things and having so much experience here so when I say that that humans are not the most highly evolved beings on this planet it's not just about the plants and the animals uh, the rocks the wind the elementals it's about these other these other beings 
Now, when I died um, and was in this particular place and interacting with these beings that were still living day to day right next to human beings, um, and I came out of that body and opened myself up to other senses so that I could interact with them, then I realized at that point that they were all here for their experience as well. And they operate under those same rules, the same law of attraction rules. So that was very, very interesting. And there was, uh, it, it was really, they were the first ones and the easiest. The easiest for me to talk to, the fastest, the easiest were the human ghosts. Because a human ghost is not very far vibrationally from a live human, as you think of them. Okay, there's not very much of a vibrational difference, which is why there's so many people who can uh, pretty easily speak and telepathically interact with ghosts is because there's not very much difference. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to learn to communicate with um, a dead person. It really is. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I just thought I'd share that. Um, and I'm going to end this video and then I'm going to continue on talking about this stuff about ghosts and these other aliens. And I'm going to put that on my Patreon uh, channel. So if you'd like to see additional videos, then come and join us over in the Patreon department because I found out I'm supposed to be giving Patreon people extra videos and talk to them specifically. And I want to thank them for their support because it's lovely and I really appreciate it. So uh, thanks for bearing with me, guys. Uh, as I work on my book, I'll probably be talking about some things that get triggered about that experience and uh, might bring you some more information that might be of interest. All right. I hope you guys are having a great day. It's a beautiful day here today. Uh, I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you later. Huge hugs now. Bye.